Hey YouTube, how you guys doing tonight? Kevin here coming back at you with another video. So we're working on Aaron's bike again and uh, I want to, you know, anything that's opened up gets priority. And then, um, so we have this bike we're going to do tonight. We're going to see if we can get some compression going on up in the top end. If we can get the compression back, we'll uh, move on. We still got to pull off the carburetor, so we're going to probably do the carburetor pulling that off first. And then getting this thing buttoned up up top, if we can. And uh, I have an idea how we can get compression on this thing. So, I'll show you guys that. And uh, second off, on Dave's bike, I just moved it out. Right here, Dave's bike on the Suzuki TS125. The crank seals just came in for that today. So, we are going to be doing this bike tomorrow. So, tonight, we're going to get this bike right here. Top end buttoned up. So, we can get Dave's bike back on the top here and get that bike finished up. Because on Dave's bike, all we have to do is crank seals and uh, one wire for the, uh, the brake. I don't know why this um, brake light's not working. So, that should be pretty easy. Um, it's just a matter of tearing the bike apart. So, let's get back into this one. But before we do, please take a moment, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so when I post a video, you guys get it. And if you can, please share my channel on your Facebook, on your YouTube, on, on whatever you got. Okay, whatever format you guys use, that would be most appreciated. Trying to grow this channel, and you guys have been an absolute amazing help. Thank you guys for all your contribution. So, um, working on, on this beautiful piece of equipment, and let's just take this rag off here. Now, I put rags over everything that's opened up, and the reason why is because I have a dirt floor. And if you don't, dirt can actually pick up underneath those. So if you guys have one of these Shelter Logics, um, that's the, the name of the brand of the tent that I'm using. Um, air can get underneath there and, and stir up some dirt. So make sure you cover over everything and cover it over the best you can. Um, one of the things I like to do, and if I'm not gonna be using it for a little bit, like say I'm, I'm gonna be in all day, I like to take some um, masking tape and tape over inlets and stuff like that. So I cover over the car. It just, it just stops dirt and debris from coming in. This part right here is easy to blow out. But it's a lot harder when it's inside the crank. So we don't do that. We, we cover it over with rags. It's just one of the things you guys should be doing. I just wanted to bring that to your attention. All right. Enough of that. So let's get, uh, let me explain to you what's going on. Okay. I have two pistons. This is the piston right here that's in, in the bike right now. And you can see how it's got a lot of carbon. The rings are really shiny. And it's, well, this, this piston's junk. It's been hammered on. Okay. Now, I have a G4 that happens to have the same piston. And I believe, so this one here kind of suffered from the same thing. Um, yeah, this one kind of suffered from the same thing. So, what we're going to do is, we're going to see if we can clean up this piston right here. That's not abused. It was run kind of funky. You can see how it's burnt on top of the piston. But we're going to clean all that up. And see if we can reuse this piston. If we can reuse this piston with some different rings. Um, I think that would be great for that cylinder. Now the cylinder had some um, grooves in it. And I kind of. Uh, what I did was. It was stepped up from when he hammered on the top of the piston. It kind of marred up the cylinder. So I cleaned it up the best I could. Uh, we got to wash it real quick. And we're going to um, use it. I was able to get those marks nice and smooth you can see inside there it's kind of hard to see but it's nice and smooth in there it's nice and clean so it, it honed up nicely so and we did all that work to the cylinder so we're going to we are going to use the cylinder um but what we got to do is we got to get a piston to work with it so that's our next step all right let's get you guys in the stand and let's get crack a lacking all right so get you guys in the stand and we're going to take off the piston and basically there is a, a circ clip on this side is what they call it. Uh, C clip, snap ring, whatever you guys want to call it. It's in there. So I'm using a pick, just a regular pick. I'm going to slide it in. Use my thumb right here, but be careful because you guys can easily stab yourself. Get in back of the pin and kind of just pull it forward. And there you guys have it right there. So we got the pin out. I only take off one side if I can. Kind of stuck in there. I'll go get a piston pin removal tool. Okay. 
Um, you probably ask yourself, what does a piston pin removal tool look like? This right here is what it looks like right here. It's just a, a steel pin with different size for different wrist pins right there. And what I'll do is I'll put that on the other side and I'll use my little, my brass hammer and tap, tap, tap a row. All right. Just sometimes they stick in there, you know? Yeah, that was not there. Okay. Kind of how the throttle on the way, but it's all right. We can figure that out. Wow, that one's in there. I'm really having to hammer on this, guys. Okay. That is why you use the correct tools for the correct job. Hey, you guys can see how bad this piston is. See so how just these rings are just frozen right to it. You can see all the transfer and everything on the sides. This right here is all what they call blow by. And literally what it means is it blows by the piston. So when the spark ignites the fuel and, and air mix and of course the oil, it goes past the rings. And this is ash. So back in the older days they had ash in their oil. Okay, that's what it's called, ash. And um well, mixed with certain fuels, it would do this. So, it stuck the rings, and you can see how stuck that ring. I mean, those rings are seized right to that piston. There was no way this, this piston was giving us any compression. I mean, outside of the 60 pounds that it gave us. And then, of course, the wrist pin bearing, which is actually good. And, surprisingly, it's lubricated, so... Um, can't go wrong with that. But I'm going to get the other piston and we'll get that out. Now, because I'm using the wrist pin from the other engine, um, I'm actually going to swap out the bearings and use the wrist pin that came out of the other motor. Uh, just because they're worn together. Alright. So, I'm going to start a war on YouTube right now. Here's how I start a war on YouTube. Can you use a used piston? Yes. Yes, you can. New, obviously, is always better. But if you're not redoing the cylinder and you have a good piston, you can reuse a piston. I do it all the time. Okay? So, don't be intimidated by that. Obviously, new is better. I'm going to show you guys how I clean up a piston that has... A little bit of ash on it right here some a little bit of scuffing which is perfectly normal in fact this is going to happen anyway all right and how I clean a crown this is called a crown now I need to know how the crown is because it has a little arrow on it that faces the exhaust okay and you want to make sure that there's no imperfections no melting no you know like the hammer marks are okay but if they're too flat like this one you grab this little piston here The crown has a flat spot on it. If you guys can see right here, it's dented. Okay, and that kind of, yeah, I don't really like that. That weakens it too. So, this piston right here is not something I would reuse. This is not a viable piston. Had it not been smashed down, um, yeah, this right here would have been an okay piston to use. The skirt's not too bad. You know, it's still smooth and it can be cleaned up. All right, so let's get into it. So, how I clean up a piston, I start with the crown first because that right there is the... Um, what you call it? Yeah, the meat and potatoes on the firing end. I'm using my brass brush, and I'm going to clean up the top. Now I'm not going to do that right now on uh, the screen. I'm going to shut you guys off for a second. I'm going to do that because it's really loud. I've been cleaning up this piston now for a few moments, and you can see how there's a the here's the piston right here, and you can see the buildup on top of the piston. This bike must have run absolutely poorly. Look at all the, how thick 
I could catch it with my fingernail. And that's just, that's only, um, that's the underlayer. I already took a layer off this thing. So I got more cleaning to do. That's after 18 minutes and I'm still cleaning it. Okay, so we got the uh, piston crown all cleaned up. You can see right here where there was a little bit of pitting right there from probably some a little bit of pre-detonation from all that carbon up there. But it's, it's, it's a little bit in there, but it's not bad. It's still usable. And one of the things I've noticed on here, there is no numbers on here. So this is not an oversized piston. This is stock. And there is your line right there for your exhaust. And you can see all the crud inside the, um, the ring grooves. Okay, that is very, very bad. So we're going to have to clean all that out. And uh, how do you clean that out, you're probably asking. I just use a pick. And you, you go like this until you can't feel it no more, until it doesn't grab anything. Like, hear that? Hear that crunching? Okay. Just go back and forth on it. And the other thing you can use, you can use a small flathead screwdriver right in there too and just kind of run like that. Or you can take your rings, if you're not going to reuse the rings, snap them in half and put that in there and clean them up. But you just want to get all that carbon out of there. That causes rings to, uh, to stick and it also can lower your compression. Once again, if you have the opportunity to get a new piston, you might as well but um, I've got a perfectly good use one right here and there's really nothing wrong with it so I'm very happy with it now a scuff that's not bad okay see how it's not you can't run your fingers you can't catch it with your fingernail if you can't catch it with your fingernail okay it's good um, so this skirt right here everything looks good on this you know and I'll show you another way you can clean these up too a really cool way I use wet and dry sandpaper, 3,000 grit. It's really, really fine. I mean, you can't even... So what I do is I take some WD-40, spray it on, onto the thing there. Watch this. Wait till you see this, guys. Wait till you see this. Okay, that's it right there. You see how much came off? Now watch this. Watch what happens when I wipe this piston off. This is what 3,000 grit wet dry sandpaper. Okay, here's the piston. Look at that skirt. 3,000 grit. Okay, and you can get this in the automotive section at like the auto parts stores. Watch this. Swing piece of piston. I'm not pausing it. I'm just keeping you like this. Sorry for the up and down motion on the screen. Hopefully I don't make you sick. You'll see it. It's a perfectly viable piston. Okay, let me wipe it down. See how greasy and oily it is. From the WD-40. Now I'm just going to clean it and just wiping it down now. Look at that, guys, huh? There's a scuff mark right there, but that's okay. Like I said, you can't run your thing, you can't catch your fingernails in it. So it's perfectly good. And it's basically that's it. So I'm going to clean up the rest of this and I'll be right back. All right, so now I got the piston cleaned up. Looks nice, right? Huh? Not bad. All right, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about why wrist pins fail. All right, you see underneath this piston right here, you can see all that blackness, that soot. Okay, so what that is, is that is the blow-by that goes around the piston and goes into the crankcase and makes mixed in with your um, air and fuel mix. Okay, when that happens... Okay, now you're just taking the dirt, the soot, and you're going up the transfer ports onto your piston, and then it just bakes it on here. You saw that, that um, thickness, how thick everything was, because it blew past the rings. 
And then what happens is when the piston comes down, all right, I want to show you guys this. When the piston travels down, it takes the fuel and air mix and pumps it up into the transfer ports. These right here are your transfer ports on both sides. And we're going to be doing a video on transfer ports and crankshafts and cylinders and all that because I want to show you guys where the power loss is on these bikes. But anyway, um, so these are your transfer ports. And now you're taking soot and you're pumping it up into your jug, in through the ports on the piston and on, in through the ports on the cylinder and then on top of the piston. And that's going to result in poor performance and foul and plugs. So, um, typically, what I do is I do an evaluation. You always want to take a look at your plug and see how your engine is burning. This engine right here, and hold on, I want to stop for a second and talk to you guys about this. This is the reason why you want to use good quality two-stroke oil, okay? That's going to prevent that from happening. Low ash, you want to use the proper oil. You don't want to use oil that was intended for, say, a boat. Or a liquid cooled engine like a KX100. Okay, because a KX100 might be a 100cc, but it's liquid cooled, has different oil, and that gets pre mixed. So, this, this is where the pre mixing and the, um, what do you call it, the oil pump are two different oils. So, you want to make sure when you buy your oil for your bike, it is low ash, it is for oil injection, and you want to make sure it's for an air cooled engine. Those are your three things you want to make sure of. Because if it's not, remember how black that piston is, that can happen to you. These engines are not designed to be pre-mixed, okay? Pre-mixing them is just not good for these engines. So, make sure you take the time and do your bike up right. You know, use the proper oils. Leave the oil pump hooked up. When your oil tank gets to a half a tank, top it off. That way you don't have to ever worry about bleeding it off. Use the half tank rule, okay? All right, guys, I want to show you guys something else you want to make sure of. Make sure your pins are in. Okay, these are your alignment pins for your um, your piston rings. If they are not in there, throw away the piston, grab a new one. Don't even try finding it or putting it back in. You need a new one. You need to find what happened to the old one, but you, you don't want to try putting them back in. If they are sticking out past the ring land, don't drive them in. Replace them, because if it came out then, it'll come out again. All right? So... All right, let me get this thing uh, finished cleaning up, and then we'll um, get crack a Okay, so we have the piston all cleaned up right here. We have the cylinder all prepped and ready to go. We checked it for flatness. We checked the cylinder. We checked the gasket surface. The gasket surface I already cleaned on the engine and slipped a new gasket onto it. Okay, so now the next step. We're using the used piston. We have the rings that came off of it, so we're going to check the rings first, okay? Now, shiny rings can be dulled up using the same method we use to clean up the piston. is with 3,000, and you can just buff them until they're, uh, what do you call it there, and dull them up a little bit, okay? There's a couple things you need to know about piston rings. These piston rings aren't just rings. They're also bearings. These are what keeps the piston sliding up and down the uh, cylinder, okay? They have a big job to do. And there are two rings on the two-stroke pistons. Some pistons have one ring. And that just really depends on the build of the motor, okay? So these are the rings that came off that piston. And they're not bad, okay? So if you look... I don't know if you can see it or not, I'm going to put my finger there. See if I can blow you up here a little bit. Yeah, I can. Okay, see how the rings are tapered? Okay. So when they close, they're going to close like that, and they're going to have the taper part. The, the bottom's going to touch, and then the top is going to be open. Because they have to fit around that pin. All right? So if you have them upside down, the top part's going to hit the pin, and then it won't, it won't even go into the cylinder. All right? So, even though we're using used piston rings, and we're going to assume that they're okay, they're good, never do that. Never assume. What we're going to do is we're going to take the piston rings, we wipe them down, they're nice and clean, okay? They look alright, they don't look bad. 
we're going to stick them into the cylinder one at a time. Okay, we're going to use the piston to square them off. Okay, so now they're squared in the cylinder. And you can see where the gap is. Alright. Now, according to the book, which I wrote on here because I sent this is the piston for the KE-102. Alright. Ring gap is between 15 and 35, a point, not 35 millimeters, 0.15 and 0.35 millimeters or 59 thousandths, you know, um, 138 thousandths of an inch. Okay. We want to measure that. We want to make sure we get that, that measurement. I'm sorry. I'm looking through this through the camera. So I, I used the metric one. 15 thousandths hot metric millimeters. Okay. To 35. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the one that fits in there. That's the 11. So we want, uh, let's see here. These are all messed up. That's 20. So let's go bigger than 20. Let me grab one that's all in order. Hold on. Okay. So then you take your fill gauge. Stick it in. In the groove. Square on. And when you run it up, it should you should just feel it touch on both sides. Okay. So this one right here. Move back and forth. It's kind of hard to see without the uh, light on. Hold on. Okay, that feels good right there. I can feel it touching both sides. So this is 025. So you see right here, it's from 015 to 035. I'm at 0. Two five, okay. So that's the one you want to use. Well, that's the one. That ring is the one you want to use, not the fill gauge. So I was able to get that to twenty five, and I could feel it just. I can't move it side to side, okay. So that's a good ring. Now we're gonna say that when you put the ring in there, it was zero ten. Okay, what do you do? I'll show you what you do. So, what you'll do is you'll slide the ring back out of the cylinder. You'll take your nail file and you will change it. You'll file it a couple of times and then retry it. File it a couple of times and retry it. Now, why is ring gap important? As the engine heats up, cylinder will get a little bigger and so won't the rings. And that gap will actually close up. So it starts off at this, but by the time the engine gets hot, it's going to be around eight thousandths. Okay? And that's what you want. If you have too tight of a gap, the ring will actually overlap itself and it will seize into the piston and just ruin your cylinder. Okay? So this ring right here is good. This can go back on. And we're going to grab the other ring and I'm going to clean that one up real quick as well. I'm just wiping it down, checking for imperfections on the ring, making sure that there is no score marks on the on the uh, on the ring itself, and then I'm going to stick it in. Take the piston upside down, set it in the bore, till it's nice and squared. That is. I'm going to try the first the uh, same size that that one is because chances are. They'd be about the same. And sure enough, it is. Okay, good. All right, so things at 25 thousandths. The minimum is 15. The top end is uh, 35. I'm pretty much in the middle. I'm good with that. So we're going to go ahead and reinstall these piston rings and use these piston rings. So to put these on, remember the groove down bottom. Go gentle with these. These things will snap like nothing, like a twig. All right, so I'm actually going to install it in the first one first. And then what I'll do is I'll use my finger here, push up on it. Set it onto the next ring land. 
and walked it down like that. Now you can really see how it fits. See how it fits into the pin? So when it squeezes together, it should land right on that pin like that, and that's going to make a, a full circle. Do the same thing with the top. Locate that pin right there. Top, top ring is always the easiest, but you want to get the second one done first. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Just kind of rolls right around it, and boom. All right. Let's get you guys moved over there, and we're going to install this piston. All right. Always treat a used piston as if it was new. These are a couple of heat shrink tubes I throw over here because that's where it's going to be sitting. All right, let me get my... I am using Permatex Ultra Slick. This is the part number right here, 81950. I've been using stuff forever in a day. I absolutely swear by this stuff. So on every single bike I use, I, I do a top end to or a bottom end or whatever I use. That's what it is. All right, so um, I'm going to kick this thing over a little bit here and get that connecting rod up. See if I can do that. Hold on. All right. Connecting rod is up. All right. Or as up as much as I want it. Let's see. Okay. Then I will take my wrist pin bearing and I will lubricate it with the slick Permatex stuff. And just slide that right in there. Boom. Okay, so that's in there. Then I shall take the piston. There's an arrow right here that faces the exhaust and I drove the piston pin out this way, so I leave that in like that as a reference. It's nice and clean. Hold it on there like so. Kind of have to push it through a little bit. So, all right, like so. All right. Arrow, yep. Yada, yada, yada. No, I pushed it in too far. Hold on. Okay. I pushed the wrist pin in too far to start. Okay, You'll feel it when it wants to go in, you know? Just like that. Okay. Then it will expose the groove for the connecting rod to the uh, circlip, which is that little pin on the side. You want to make sure it's not rusted or worn. And if you suspect it, like I'm suspecting this one, I'm going to go replace it with another one. Okay, these can be a little bit of a bear to put in. Just remember to make sure you hear a snap. When it goes in. If it doesn't hear a snap, you will have a problem. All right, I heard that snap. And then I always, even though I hear a snap, I'm going to inspect it anyway. Don't assume anything. Okay, looks good. Going to double check up top. Good. All right, that's all the way in there. And then as a final test, I'm going to take my wrist pin um, tool, I'm going to stick it on the other side, and try to push the piston pin back out. And I cannot. Okay. 
All right, so my pin is in. My arrow is towards the exhaust. That's all set. We're going to lubricate it up, line up the pins, and then throw that cylinder on there. Throw the head on there with a new gasket and see if we got compression. All right, so now I'm going to slide this back. Make sure my pins are lined up. Just like that. Lubricate everything. Not to go crazy like I'm doing right now, but okay. All right. Make sure the pin is set there, and that the pin is set on that side over there. And then we can drop the cylinder right on top of it. Here's the part that is tricky. I'm gonna set that up against the studs. Sometimes they can move on you guys. Sometimes they can move. It does happen. They're tapered, so you got to make sure you get them in the right, at the right angle, at the right spacing. And they got to make sure you're into the pins. Because if you don't have those pins in, that's it. I got the top one, but I ain't got the bottom one. The bottom one's being a pickle. And the pin to that is right here. So I gotta go up enough. Rotate it. Pulling that out. Just like that. That, my friends, is how the magic happens. Alright, now. Let me get you guys moved over here. Like that. See if you guys can see. I'm going to see how easy it turns over. Oh yeah, guys. That's nice. Beautiful. Okay. And then for a new head gasket. That's inc incorrect. That is correct like that. So that the head gasket lines up properly around there. Right, I'm going to clean up the head before we throw that on. Alright. Take the salt in the head, put that on. Like so. Look at that, guys, huh? 
I'm actually going to end the video right there. It is getting late. So tomorrow when we get back at it, we will go ahead and torque this thing down. And then we'll do a compression test. I want to thank everybody for watching. If you guys have any questions or any uh, comments about this, um, by all means, please send them my way. Because there is a lot involved with what I do here. And um, these bikes are getting harder and harder to find. So reusing parts and making what you have work is part of the game, you know. Sure, you could buy a piston online, be a wise co piston. It's going to take, you know, God only knows right now with the coronavirus how long it's going to take to come in. Um, but if you have good, usable parts, go ahead and use them, you know. And that's why I showed you guys tonight my uh, 3000 um, grit sand, wet dry sandpaper with a WD 40. That thing makes it look sweet. And it cleans it up. And once again, it really depends on the imperfections. I could clean this piston up, but it's got too much damage on it. And then I know that this piston is not right. Where I know that piston that's in there is perfectly fine. You follow what I'm saying? We check the ring gap. We know the ring gap is good for the cylinders. We know it's within specification. We know that the piston skirts are in excellent condition. And the rings are good. So we're, we're good to go. So what we're going to do is uh, finish this bad boy up and um, get some compression. And that's it. So I didn't get to pull the carburetor off tonight. Bummer. But um, we'll work on that next time. So anyway, guys, once again, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And I will talk to you guys later. I'm out. Hey, guys. Welcome back. All right. So I torqued down the uh, cylinder head to 20 foot pounds. I did record it, but it didn't come out. So I'm doing it again. All right. In fact, I'll show you. I've got my calibrated torque wrench, torque wrench right here. And this thing is accurate. So I, I torqued it down to 20 foot pounds. I'm grabbing my compression tester that I know. And uh, because, well, I forgot where I put the other one. <laughs> Happens. So I know where the small always is. So um, it's at zero PSI right now. Remember, we were at just over 60 PSI. So we want to see if this thing's going to climb up over 120. So 120 is considered good. Anything over that is a bonus, okay? So I'm going to crack the throttle back wide open. But before I do this, please take a moment and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon. So when I post the video, you guys get it. Now, I do have, on pretty much every video I did, I have torqued down a cylinder head. When you torque these down, I'm going to 20 foot-pounds, not 16. The book says 16. I go to 20. It handles it, and it lasts a lot, whole lot longer. Because part of your maintenance is checking your head bolt torque. 20 is the, the sweet spot. I go in a crisscross pattern. So, and an X. So, the tip of my finger will be the bolts, and my knuckles are too. So, I go in a crisscross pattern. Boom, 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 boom. You don't have to do any steps. I just go 20, 20, 20, 20. Boom, done. All right? So let's get this thing checked out. Guys, look at this. Almost 150 PSI of compression. I would say that's a win. Okay. Cool beans. Next step. We gotta pull that carburetor off. So let me get you guys. Let me get this bike back up to speed, up to height, and we'll uh, go there. All right. So I, I do want to recap real quick. So I um, that's the factory cylinder that was on the bike. We replaced the piston with a nice used one, good quality one with good rings. We replaced the cylinder head because the cylinder head was tightened down onto the cylinder um, that was all um, distorted, and when it did that, it transferred the the, um, the parts that were sticking up from being hit with a hammer onto the cylinder. So the cylinder head that came off, this is actually junk. Alright? Because it was torqued down like that. So this is a KE100 head. Same one. And uh, well, we're going to bolt down the exhaust now. So we have ignition. We got the ignition part all squared away. We have the um, what do you call it? The, the cylinder, the top end done. So now we're going to throw the exhaust on. We're going to do the carburetor and then this thing should be ready to run. So it's pretty simple.
Okay, so this is the exhaust ring gasket right here. And you might look at that and go, oh, well, mine's not round. It was round before it gets crushed. This gets crushed. And it sits right up in here, like so. And this is clearly the wrong size. Right, let me go get the right size for this. Next size down. Okay, I don't have one for this, so I'm going to use the one that came out of it. And if I notice it leaking, I'll just replay all water a new one. So, in order to put these these um, exhaust rings in, they have a tendency they like to fall out. Okay? So, what I do is I do a couple of dabs of grease. And I stick it right in there. And that holds it. Just like that. Then I take the exhaust. And try to fit it back in the way it came out. I'm stuck on something here. Okay, I'm in there. There and there are two bolts to hold it all together. I start the two back ones, but I don't tighten them. I just starting them. Okay, once this started, then I do the front two. This bottom was a little bit more tricky to get to, but it can be done. Okay. Now that, that part's on, I'm going to zap that together, and I'll be right back. Alright, so we got the two header bolts tight. We got the bolt there tight. And we got the bolt up top there tight. And that's it for a tightening of the exhaust. Now what we're going to do real quick. Get you guys back over here. Let this pipe down for a minute. Alright. So the next step we're going to do is... Uh, hold on a second. Okay. Well, potion number nine. See if it'll eat what old if it'll even Oh if you guys heard that, but it felt like a kick. Yeah. <laughs> that, my friends, can you guys see that? <laughs> All right. This thing's firing, guys. It's not running, but it's firing. It's puffing. Definitely, definitely firing. Let's give it a little, give it a little tickle down there. Okay. Oh yeah, I got smoke guys off the tailpipe here.
Okay. Look at this. Yeah, there's something like this. Now the reason why it's doing that is because there's a lot of uh, oil and stuff in the crankcase from when they tried to free it up. So it's going to take a while for that to all break up. But once we clean the carburetor out, <laughs> she's going to be a runner. All it's doing is following out the plug because of all the oil. We'll get to take the spark plug out, spin the rotor, and blow that stuff out at another time. Yeah. It's just all oil soot. <laughs> Alright, so we'll have to clean that out and get that carburetor off. Let's get that carburetor off. Alright, so on this side of the bike right here, this is a lot involved on this side. We have our clutch adjustment, which we're going to do after. Uh, not tonight, but after we get the bike running, we got to take this cover off and check the oiler. Make sure that it is adjusted correctly. And make sure that there is oil going through that from the reservoir all the way down through. So let's get that carburetor ripped off because tomorrow she's gonna take a nice bath in the ultrasonic cleaner. Should get this gas cap out, ruin it. Good, we did. Okay. That's it. Flathead screw. Okay. And that comes off like that. This one has a remote choke up on the uh, handlebars right here. You can see the cable. Uh, so we're going to pull that out next. Typically 12 millimeter. I'm just getting oil out of this carburetor. That's all I'm getting. So that's telling me that the, uh, the reason why this thing won't start is because of all the oil. So we're going to have to flush out that oil. Yeah, oh yeah, that's all oil. Look at this. Let's hold my fingers. It's all oil. So we're going to pull the bowl off real quick and take a look and see what's inside of it. See how it is. Okay. So now we're going to pull this carburetor bowl off and see what we're looking at. I can tell you right now there's a lot of oil on this, on this carburetor. Look at this. It's all over here now. Carburetor is definitely going to need a bath in the ultrasonic cleaner. That's for sure. I'll run that during the day. Just curious to see how bad it is inside there. 
Hey guys, look at this. It's missing the pilot jet. You know the auto mixture screw that goes right there? It's missing. It's completely gone. <laughs> and it would, on the newer carburetors, it's on the side there, but this one's in the front. Completely missing. <laughs> wow. A gasket's junk. Okay, no big deal. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> There's no way it's running. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll clean this up. I'll replace this gasket because I already broke it. So we'll take that out of there right out of there. Boom. Looks like the floats are going to need to be tested. And the needle and seat are going to need to be replaced. Alright, cool beans. It is what it is. And that's all caca. Look at that. So, that's going to wrap it up for tonight. And, uh, well, we had a semi for a start. <laughs> now, we want to make sure we got the, um, I know the compression's up there enough to run it because it was up over almost 150. It's like 149 PSI. Um, we got spark, so we verified that with the exhaust when we saw the smoke coming out. But, there's so much oil inside this engine, or actual motor oil, that there is no possible way for it to start. So that is just going to foul out that plug right on the first part of the get-go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some uh, of this green tape here after I get off the uh, after I get done filming. I'm going to block that off so no dirt or debris gets in there. And then tomorrow I will ultrasonic cleaner, and um, tomorrow night we'll. Do all actually, we won't be working on this tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, we'll be working on Dave's Suzuki um, because the um, oil crankshaft oil seals came in. So, we're going to be doing crank seals to the um, to Dave's bike. They finally came in. So, um, once this thing is off the rack here, we'll clean up all the tools, get everything all cleaned up, and then we'll be changing gears literally uh, working on a Suzuki. So we're going to work on the TS-125 tomorrow night, get those crank seals put in, do a first start on that, and, uh, you know, an actual run, an actual run run. Uh, we did a first stop, but now we're going to do a run run on it and um, fix that electrical and get that done. So Dave's bike will be done. Hopefully, uh, hopefully tomorrow night or the night after, one of those two nights. Um, and then we'll get back on uh, Aaron's bike here and get this one done. And then after this one done, we have to get back on that uh, 125. We have the Harvey Spooner bike coming up. So we got to finish off that bike. So we have a lot of bikes to work on. We have so much stuff to do. So a lot of projects, a lot of stuff to do. All right, guys, I'm off for now. Thank you for watching. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for subscribing. And you guys have been absolutely awesome. Thank you for all those awesome comments you guys have been leaving. And all the thumbs up. I do do very much appreciate it. Hopefully, I am teaching you guys some awesome stuff. And uh, it gets you guys off the couch. Get you guys out there turning wrenches on your vehicle. So, just remember, it doesn't matter what you guys have for a bike. Maintenance is key. And keeping the bike running the way it was intended. Modifications will only get you so far. Modifications are typically, they over time destroy bike. Like, removing the oiler on this bike right here. Um... You definitely don't want to do that, you know. You want to keep the automatic oiling system in here. And just as a rule of thumb, you know, keep an eye on it. You know, when it gets to a half, refill it. When these when these oil pumps go, they over oil. So you don't have to worry about them not oiling. If they're not oiling, it's because you let it run out of oil and then you lost your prime. And to prime them is real simple. I'm going to show you guys how I do it um, on another bike. Actually, on that white bike on the 1987 uh, when we start working on that. But uh, this this bike right here is going to be a great bike for Aaron. And he's going to love it. He already loves it. Which is awesome. He already loves it even though it wasn't running. So that's a testament to his commitment. And the fact that he drove all the way up here. To bring this bike up to me. And that's an honor for me. It's an honor for me to. You know you guys come from all over the place. To bring your bikes to me. And I do very much appreciate that. 
that means a lot to me and, and I can't tell you how honored I just blown away from this channel and my subscribers you guys have just been absolutely honest uh, awesome and um, you know just keep those comments coming and uh, share the channel and help us grow because the more we uh, the more we grow the more awesome cool fixes like Aaron's beautiful bike here that we get to work on and now you guys got to see how to test a magneto and when I talk to you guys, I, I don't want to come across as, as a jerk when I, you know, you guys send me offline things and stuff like that. And I do everything by the book, okay? The stuff that I'm teaching you guys is legit right out of the book. And I've been doing it that way for 30 years, okay? 30 years. So when I tell you it works, it works because I've done it. And that's how I do it. And you guys see it on camera. You guys see it right in front of you. And the stuff I'm doing is not to hide. If you guys... If it doesn't work for you, like setting the points, I'll, I'll try to do my best to help you guys out. But, I mean, chances are it's something you're doing wrong, you know, because I've been doing it. You line up your marks, you, you time them. And I'm going to show you guys a, um, a common mistake with these points at another time. I did mention it. Uh, it's called a false um, gap. So I'll be teaching you guys about that at another time. So, anyway, guys. Thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, and thank you for hanging out with me. I will talk to you guys later. I'm out!